Thank you very much for returning to our channel. We've done another program before saying why you should retire in Vietnam. Uh, in case you don't know me, my name is Ken Yu. I've had over 10 years of experience as an American attorney helping people all over the world, including retiring in Vietnam. Uh, we have offices in Thailand, we have offices in Singapore, and then the United States. So we're targeting Americans who really want to retire and live here in Vietnam. Today we're going to share about the three hows of retiring in Vietnam. The first thing is regarding your visa, how do you stay long term. The second item is regarding property, should you buy or should you rent and what are the rules. And finally taxation, as a US uh, citizen living in Vietnam, what are your tax implications. So stay tuned, we're going to share with you those three main items on uh, how to retire in Vietnam. Before getting back to our video regarding the three considerations of how to retire in Vietnam, I just want to give a big shout out to Vietnam in its handling of the global pandemic. As of shooting of this video, there have been zero casualties and over 50% of all the infected uh, individuals have recovered or are recovering. So now let's get back to our video. The number one thing about retiring in Vietnam is regarding your visa. So we have kind of three main ways in order for you to uh, have a long-term stay here. Uh, the first one is more of the short-term uh, approach. It is what is called a uh, one-year multiple entry visa. You can get it uh, three months at a time under the current law. And every three months you'd have to leave the country. But there's a very simple way to do it, uh, what we call the visa run. You have to cross an international border such as Thailand or uh, Cambodia or any one of the Southeast Asian countries that's very easy to travel to. Um, the main one is Cambodia. Uh, it takes about six hours. Uh, you take the bus at about six in the morning. You head to the uh, border. Uh, the closest border is about three hours away. You cross the border, you wait, and then you come back, and then three hours back. So it takes about six hours. That's called the Cambodia visa run. Uh, many retirees are using that right now. Uh, the second way is uh, be able to get a a uh, work permit or a visa in order to retire here. Uh, many countries now in Southeast Asia such as uh, Thailand or Malaysia or Singapore have retirement visas but you have to have certain proofs. Unfortunately Vietnam doesn't have the retirement visa right now so thus you can't uh, use it to stay here for long term. However we definitely see it in the future as the numbers of expats are living and retiring here in Vietnam. Uh, under that program, you can get uh, what's called a permanent retiree uh, card. Uh, the other program that's much more permanent, and it relates to if you are a Vietnamese overseas, what we call a Vic Gil, is you can sh if you can show that your parents were born in Vietnam and they have ties to Vietnam, or if you were born in Vietnam and can show the ties such as a birth certificate, a uh, certain business in Vietnam, you can possibly get a permanent resident card and then get Vietnamese passports, a national ID, and then also get a what's called a Ho Kao, which is a family book. Once you have all of that, you have the full rights and the full bundle of rights as a Vietnamese citizen. So that's only reserved for Vietnamese who are, uh, were born in Vietnam or their parents were born in Vietnam and can show that tie. Another way if you are actually married to a Vietnamese uh, person uh, that's another way that you can also get Vietnamese citizenship and then have a more retire long-term retirement plan uh, under the Vietnamese doing business in Vietnam or a business person doing business in Vietnam you can also get what's called a five-year visa exemption this visa exemption allows you to have multiple entry for five years or the length of your passport period and you can go in and out from three to six months at a time, depending on the law at that time. Then you can travel outside and come back in. So the five years is probably one of the more uh, profitable and easy and efficient way to uh, have your visa status in Vietnam. So those are three ways that visas can help you retire in Vietnam. All right, the second consideration when you're coming to Vietnam is whether you should buy or you should rent. Real estate is important. Where you live, uh, how you enjoy your life, if you want to be by the beach, if you want to be in the big city or if you want to be in the mountains, Vietnam has it all. Uh, so looking at the legal side, you have uh, the renting side is very easy. You just work with an agent, you can rent from uh, $700 a month all the way up to $1,500 to $2,000. But as a retiree, keep it very simple. Just rent a one bedroom for 700 
or a uh, two bedroom for about 1,100 per month. And you can live very comfortably. There's a pool, there's a game room, there's a greenery, there's a garden. But if you want to go to the beach, it's actually even, even cheaper. So if you look at Vũng Tàu, Đà Nẵng, or Nha Trang, great places to um, retire. The beach is right there. The weather is really nice. Um, there are other places like uh, Đà Lạt, if you want to go to the mountains. They're really nice as well. Um, so renting is very simple, but if you are looking to stay and retire for, let's say, 15, 20 years, probably buying might be your better option. Uh, there are many places you can buy from 50,000 US dollars up to 300,000, and they're really nice apartments. But you have to understand that the foreign restrictions of, regarding properties in Vietnam, as a foreigner, you can buy an apartment or a building in an apartment and have a lifetime perpetuity. But if you are looking to buy a house or land, then you only have a 50-year lease with a uh, one-time renewal. So you have a total of 99 years, roughly, in order to uh, buy a property. The third really important issue about retiring in Vietnam is understanding the tax implications. As an American, uh, the worldwide tax system is you're going to be taxed on any income you have, such as Social Security benefits or uh, any other passive income from rentals, stock options and other items as a retiree in Vietnam. So you have to understand um, if you are going to retire, then what your tax implications are. So we would highly recommend you work with our tax team or your US CPA to know what is taxable and what is not taxable for your, your income. And it's mostly your social security benefits and some of your uh, IRAs or other uh, benefits. Okay, so understand those tax implications. If you need help, we'd be glad to help you. Uh, by retiring in Vietnam, there's one really great benefit is uh, Citibank or HSBC, they work with the U.S. consulate to allow you to have your uh, Social Security benefits actually transferred to Vietnam and you can pick it up here in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. So it's actually a big, big benefit. Uh, so regarding taxation, understand it and you enjoy your retirement in Vietnam. All right, I am here in Garden Grove at Steelcraft. It's a very interesting place. There are a lot of different businesses from Filipino food to Thai food, you have other items as well. If you're looking at the reasons why in Orange County, such a great weather, there's a lot to do, lots of economic developments as well in the country. So the thing is, why does someone like me would like to go to Vietnam and live and then possibly retire in the future? There are three main reasons why I would do something like that. One, there are a lot of economic development opportunities to grow your businesses various areas that have a professional sectors such as professional services, law firms or business consulting firms. Two is the cost of living is so much cheaper than here. I'll show you the menu in a little bit and you'll see that the food is 5, 10, 15, 20 dollars. Basic food you can get in Vietnam is two, three, four dollars. And the final one is real estate. You can actually acquire a lot of real estate in lands in Vietnam which is to build your passive incomes and investments. There are many things you have to identify whether where you want to live. Looking at living in the United States in this beautiful Orange County with nice weather and good people and economic development in a very isolated real estate market, that will be great. However, if you're looking to develop your skills, look into the international businesses, getting types of all over the world and take it on an emerging market where you can pick very quickly. You can work with a lot of people from different countries. Vietnam will be a great place for you. To me, building a firm, developing and having offices around the world, that is my passion. And then also giving back to help local communities to develop their skills and critical thinking, reasoning and developing themselves personally. That is the main reason why I moved to Vietnam. So from here all the way to Vietnam and I hope to see you so we can work in developing a Vietnamese market. I am not quite at the retirement age yet. But I do already have my plans. I'm going to retire here, look at the beautiful uh, sites, the cities, and of course have a little beach house as well, or maybe in the mountains of Dalak. So I hope you watched this video. You got some useful information regarding the how to retire in Vietnam. Uh, we are looking forward to um, even uh, helping you after you get here because retirement is a big matter where you retire, how you live, and how you're going to spend the rest of your life uh, in uh, joy, the beaches and having good food. So uh, we hope that you will follow us on our Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also give us comments about what we can do to help you have a better retirement in Vietnam. My name is Ken Jung on behalf of Jung Global. Thank you very much and I hope to see you here in beautiful Vietnam.